So what I'm going to do in these extra videos right here, this is week one, in case you're just turning in, tuning in, excuse me. This is week one, and what I'm going to do is some examples from the My Math Lab homework. So hopefully you already watched the video for the week. That one is a little bit longer. I believe for week one it was 49 minutes, so you might want to you know, take a couple breaks and pause, etc. This is going to be a little bit shorter and much more focused on the My Math Lab homework. So what I'm going to do is I went and looked at every homework question and I printed some of them out. So when you go to question number six, it's going to ask you something very similar to this. Most likely it's going to change the numbers, but it should be a problem just like this. So this is question number six. And it's saying take this, oh, excuse me, the cube root of negative 64 x cubed. Well, when you have a cube root of two things that are being multiplied, then you could say that is the cube root of the negative 64 times, because this is implied to be a multiplication right here, times the cube root of x cubed. Now this part right here, perhaps you can just look at that and know what the answer is. If not, you can use a calculator and say cube root. So you go right here to math, and number four is the cube root. And what's the cube root of negative 64? And as I mentioned in the previous video, make sure you use this as the negative sign. So what's the cube root of negative 64? And that part's a negative 4. And then with cube root, you can rewrite that as a one-third power. It means the same thing. So if this was a fifth root, then this would be a 1 over 5. If this was a square root, you could put this as a 1 over 2. Then use the power, the rule from exponents that a power raised to another power means you multiply these two. And when you do, it's going to be 3 over 3, which is just 1. So final answer is negative 4, x to the 1, or just x. So that is what they're asking for in the box right there. So this video is going to be much shorter than the lecture for the whole week, of course. I'm just going to go through a few examples. Let me make sure that the focus is locked. Okay, there we go. So find the linear function. mx plus b is the most common way to write. I believe in the lecture we had something like 3x plus 1 or something like that. So this is the slope and then this is the y-intercept. Okay, in general that's what they're talking about. Your answer should look something like this. Although they're using f of x here, the f of x and the y are quite often interchanged. Sometimes I'll put y, sometimes I'll put f of x. They both mean the same thing. So anyway, the graph has this as its slope. So they're saying m equals negative 15 over 11. And then the point is a 0 comma negative 2. So there's two ways to do this. One is, like I did in the lecture video, you can use y minus the y value, which is a negative 2, equals the slope times x minus the x value is 0. On this side, a negative and a negative will be positive, so that's going to be y plus 2. And x minus 0 is just really x. So on this side, we really just have the negative 15 over 11 times x. And then the last thing to do to solve for y is subtract 2 from both sides. And we get the answer y equals negative 15 over 11x minus 2. So that would be the answer, although my pen just ran out of ink. There we go. So I said there's another way to do it, and that is when you have it in this form, 
or this B right here, well, that B is the y-intercept, so that means that negative 2 goes right there for B. But you can see at the end, that's what I got anyway. So then you just type that in as your answer. Make sure you don't double type the y equals because they're already saying f of x equals, so you really only need to type in this part. And then another thing is, since they gave fractions, they're expecting your answer to be fractions. And if they did expect the answer to be decimals, so what I'm saying is just type this in exactly as it is. Don't like get a decimal for this. If they wanted a decimal, then right after this, they would say parentheses, use three decimal places. And then you'd get a calculator, divide this, use three decimals. You do have to be very careful when they do ask for decimals because if you put two decimals or you put four decimals, they're going to say, no, wrong, sorry. So they're very picky. When they do say decimals, make sure, you, and it, it's right after the answer box, so it's looking just like this. So make sure that if they say use three decimals, use three decimals. Okay, then on to another one. And this is question number 22. So graph the equation using the slope and the y-intercept. So you would click on this. It would show you another one of these. So it would pop up right here. And then there would be a little tool for graphing the line. So let me show you the math part, though. So use the slope and the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is negative 6. So that's where it's crossing the y-axis at negative 6. So the y-axis at negative 6 would be right here. Now to graph it, then I need another point. So what I could do is this is where it's crossing the y-axis. I then want to know where is it crossing the x-axis. Is it crossing over here or is it crossing over here? Well, this one has slope that's negative, which means that the line needs to be going down at an angle something like this. So that means that the x-intercept is somewhere over here, and I want to know where that is. Well, at this point, when it crosses the x-axis, that means y equals 0. So if you let y equals 0, and I plug that in right here, 0 equals negative 9 fourths x minus 6. And then I could solve for x. So I could add 6 to both sides. And then I could multiply both sides by 4. So if I, especially with a red pen, multiply this side by 4, and multiply this side by 4. These 4's are going to cancel. And then this is going to be 24 equals negative 9x. And then to solve for x, divide by negative 9 and divide by negative 9. So these cancel and x equals, so 24 divided by 9. I do not think that divides evenly. A negative 24 divided by 9 is a negative 2.667. So negative 2.667. So this is negative 4. This is negative 2. Negative 2.667 is about right here. And then you could draw the line. And like I said, when you click on this, it's going to give you the tools to put the dots. And then it's also going to have a little, um, there's going to be a little icon with a line through it, something like that. You click on that, and then you can draw the line. OK, so that is for number 22. And I have two more examples. So going in order, the next one that I saw that I should do is 
solve this by the substitution method. So this is question number 26. And keep in mind, they're most likely going to change the numbers, but it's going to be similar. So the substitution method means right here, they already solved for x. So all you need to do is take that and plug it in for x on the top equation. So that would look like the top equation says 8 times x and then replace the x with 20 minus 9y. And then it has plus a 7y and says equals negative 35. So that's the substitution method. Then go ahead and distribute. So multiply by 8 and multiply by 8. So 8 times 20 is 160 minus 8 times 9 is 72y and then plus 7y and it equals negative 35. So next what I need to do is combine like terms. So what is negative 72 plus 7? I think that's negative 65, but I want to make sure. So I'm not going to use the y's, just the number. Negative 72 plus 7 is negative 65. So right here we have negative 65y. And I need to get the numbers on the right side, so I'll need to subtract 160 so that these can cancel. And then on the right side, this is a grand total of negative 195. And we're almost done. Next, divide by negative 65 and divide by negative 65. Cancel, cancel. So we get y equals. And I'm going to guess the answer is 3. Let's see. OK, well, for one thing, negative, negative, those will cancel. So 195 divided by 65. And the answer is a positive 3. And don't start celebrating quite yet, because we also need to find out what does x equal. So if you just go back to this equation and replace the y right here with a 3, then we'll be done x equals 20 minus 9 times y and replace the y with a 3. Oh, sorry, I think that was off the screen. Here you go. So then this is going to be 27. So x equals 20 minus 27. And that is a negative 7. Now if you were turning this in as a problem set where I ask you to show your work, then you've circled your answer, so you're done. But they might be a little bit picky on how you put the answer. Yes, type your answer as an ordered pair. Okay, so we got x is a negative 7, so x's always go first, and then y is a 3, so you do need to type it as an ordered pair like that. So then right here, you put the parentheses, uh, negative 7 goes first, and then 3 goes second. And then what this means is basically if you were solving the equation, so let's say you're doing this work, doing this work, doing this work, and then right about here or so, you get 2 equals 9. And how often does 2 equal 9? Never. So then that would mean no solution. And if you get a 2 equals a 9, which is false, that means no solution. And then that would be this one right here. So if you got something false like 2 equals 9, then that means empty set, which is the way of saying there are no solutions. For infinitely many solutions, what would happen is you're doing this work, you're going along, minding your own business, and then all of a sudden it says 3 equals 3. Well, obviously 3 does equal 3. That's true. But this doesn't tell me what x equals, and it doesn't tell me what y equals. So if you get something like this, then that's this one, infinitely many solutions. 
because how often does 3 equal 3? Infinite number of times. So if you get a false statement, that's empty set. If you get a true statement, that's this one. But what happens most of the time is you do go ahead and get solutions. And then for the last example, so that one was number 26. The last example that I want to show you is number 27. So with number 27, it's similar, but it doesn't tell you how to solve it. So you could use any method you want. Since I use substitution on that one, I'm going to use the other common method, which is called elimination. So I've got 7x plus 2y equals negative 19 is the first equation. And then I've got x minus y equals 5 as the second equation. Now with the elimination method, the thinking is this is a positive 2y, and if this was a negative 2y, the 2 could cancel. So that means I have to multiply this by a 2. But if I do, then I have to multiply the whole bottom equation by it. So I multiply the bottom equation by 2, so multiply by 2, and multiply by 2, and multiply by 2. And then add the equations together. So right here on the left, it's going to be 7x plus 2x, that's 9x. These two are going to cancel each other out. That's the elimination method. And then this is going to be negative 19 plus 10. And negative 19 plus 10, so that is actually equal to negative 9. And then we only need to do one step to solve for x. Divide both sides by 9. And then on the left, these cancel, leaving us only x. And on the right, 9 divided by 9 is 1 with a negative sign. After you find out what x equals, you could plug it into either equation to find out what y equals. Of course, you should probably use the easier one. I'm going to use the bottom one. So then the the bottom one has x, so replace this x by negative 1, minus y equals 5. And then we only have two more steps. One is eliminate this negative 1 by adding 1 to both sides, and then cancel. So negative y equals 5 plus 1 is 6. And last, get rid of this negative by either multiplying both sides by negative 1 or dividing both sides by negative 1. And then we get that y equals a negative 6. And then they're probably going to ask, put the answer as an ordered pair. So you put the x first and the y second. And then that's what they're asking for right there. So make sure you put the ordered pair. So put parentheses negative 1, negative 6, and it's done.